John, uh, there were a rather positive 50 55 minutes on Monday. You must take heart from that, you know, as you look towards Barrow this week. Yeah, when we've reviewed the uh, the game and we've done it in the cold uh, light of day rather than when you're in a little bit of an emotional state after the game and you're disappointed. I thought the first 40 minutes was the best we've played all season uh, because we were playing a quality opposition and it was a quality game. Both teams were making very few errors. Both teams were asking questions of each other's defence and both teams were answering those questions. But obviously there's still the disappointment that the full-time team were able to, to last longer than us and in the end go away from us in the last 10-15 minutes. So we've still work to do, but I've taken a great deal of heart from that first half. There's certainly like a, a desperation to defend for each other and defend the line in that first half, which if you can take that standard fall would certainly stand in good step. I would agree with you and it stayed with some individuals as well right the way through. I, I mean, I recall Sam Scott holding somebody up over the line, you know, in the dying minutes and, and that's somebody who's got a real pride in, in his defensive work and, and he's got some pride in, in his efforts and in representing this this uh, this club. So, you know, many things that we're pleased about, but also several things that we weren't. Barrow on Sunday, obviously three wins from three. It's no surprise to anyone who, who knows the Barrow Raiders club and will certainly be a massive challenge in what will probably be difficult conditions again on Sunday. Yeah, well, obviously the conditions have got to be factored in and th that's another little uh, question for us. Have we learned from our errors against Sheffield? You know, we tried to play in six inch of mud and tried to throw the ball about and it didn't work and, con and consequently the team who looked after the ball basically played five drives and a kick ended up winning. So uh, we've got to see if we've learned from our previous mistakes and I've watched all three of Barrow game and, and they're the kings of mud. All, all three of their game, they played Sheffield on the opening day and it was, it was a mud lark of a game, they played Whitehaven at Whitehaven and a game was a similar one and then against Newcastle the conditions were absolutely horrific you could hardly tell one player from the other which side they were on and they've come out in all three on top uh, very low scoring you know conceding very few tries so you, you know if it's muddy uh, we and it will be muddy obviously with the weather forecast and, and the state of the pitch at, at the minute We've really got to learn from our errors against Sheffield and improve our performance. How do you prepare for those uh, those conditions when during the week it might be different, there might be no wind, no rain? How do you adapt to that and prepare? Is it a case of this is a game plan in such and such a situation? Well, what we've had, Luke, we've had wind and rain, so yeah, so uh, we've, we've been able to replicate it. But obviously, we do train on, on 4G because we're trying to, you know, make sure that we're well conditioned, make sure that the skill's good, etc. Uh, but one of the things we are doing this week is we're going to train in six inches of mud. We've got an area outside here. The floodlights are going on. They're going to get the mud boats out and we're going to, we're going to actually train in that because we've just got to attempt to prepare as thoroughly as we can but the biggest thing for me was our lack of smartness against Sheffield in comparison to them so that's the big thing that we've got to improve upon is how to adapt to the conditions mentally and then carry out what what adaptations that we're, we're proposing to the players. We've seen already just three rounds in the championship anyone can beat anyone near enough and you know Barrow three wins from three they beat Sheffield who obviously beat also beat Dewsbury or lost to Dewsbury and we obviously beat them so it's it's one of those you do have to be on your game and it's getting more competitive as we've said so Sunday will be another another one where it needs to be an 80 minutes full performance yeah. or Barrow could be taking the spoils back. back it's, it, it's a competition look I yeah. mean that's that's what people have got to realise you know in Super League anybody can beat anybody else uh, if you don't turn up with your A game it's certainly the case I would say for 12 of the 14 teams in the championship, you know, perhaps Featherston and Lee are, are a little away from us all because of the investment and, and the structures they've got at their club. But anybody else, if you don't come ready to play, you can get turned over. And that applies to us, just as we can turn anyone else over as well on our day. So, yeah, it, it's a tough competition and it should be. It's elite sport and you shouldn't be able to walk, breeze through it in elite sport. In terms of the squad for Sunday, how's the treatment table looking? Is it any emptier or are we still you know, picking up niggles here and there? There's niggles, but it's, it's looking a lot healthier, let's put it like that. So, uh, you know, we've, we've been smiling a little this week rather than scratching our heads and worrying. So, 
hopefully there'll be some returnees and I'm certain that they will improve the overall quality of the team. And just finally, the reserves kick off their season tomorrow night. A chance for the young players and maybe some fringe players to stake their claim. So we're going to start to see that competition hot up even more really with players who may be looking a bit out of form or need a rest. You know, there's going to be someone chomping at the bit. Oh, very much so. Very much so. And it's already paid off as the reserve team because, you know, we, we played Sammy Kabula in, in the reserves and, and I thought he was absolutely outstanding. So, and Chester Butler similarly so, and he got his call up straight away. So, it's already paid off, and, and I'm looking for it to pay off further in the future. And as you rightly say, look, some of these young men will be progressing and getting better, and some might surprise us, and some might you know, say to me, you've got to pick me for a first grade debut. And I'm hoping that's the case, but it's a tough old start for them, you know. St. Helens away with their depth of squad and their quality of squad, so it will be a, a real a real test for them as to see exactly the standard that, uh, that our, our young kids are at.